This is the Rotten Tomatoes score for Five Nights at Freddy's. It shows the divisive ratings between critics and the audience slash fans. And I totally understand how it is so divisive. I recently watched Five Nights at Freddy's movie, and here are my thoughts. This is going to be all over the place, but I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. This is your spoiler alert. I will talk about the movie in spoilery fashion. But I will not talk about stuff that is irrelevant to the points in case I'm making. I'm not going to talk about every Easter egg. I will mention a couple, but that's all. A night guard gets hired to look after a Chuck E. Cheese style restaurant at night to prevent vandalism and break ins. At night, though, the animatronics come to life and go after the guard. Games later, it is revealed that the owner of the restaurant, William Afton, dons a special mascot outfit to abduct children, kill them, and stuff their bodies inside the animatronics, effectively haunting the animatronics. The special mascot outfit is able to be turned into an animatronic, and to do that, the suit has a special spring lock system to protect the animatronic parts. They're spring locks. They tend to be pretty unstable. And to fit the human body into the suit. When it becomes an animatronic, it locks into place. Once the animatronics are haunted, they go after William while he's in the suit, and out of fear and sweat, the spring locks lock and effectively killing him. He then haunts the outfit known in the game as Spring Trap. Spring Trap appears in the third game. A security guard named Mike Schmidt at the mall sees a man grab a child while the child resists, and Mike tackles the man and beats the ever living shit out of him. The man, however, was the father of the child. Mike thought the child was getting abducted. He then gets fired. His career counselor gives him a security job at the abandoned restaurant from the game. We find out that when he was younger, he was told to keep an eye on his little brother. But while taking his eyes off him, his brother was abducted. That explains why he went ape shit on the father at the mall. Throughout the film, while he sleeps, he manipulates his dreams by way of the dream theory to go back to the time his brother was abducted to see if he somehow spotted the person that took him, Inception style, like seriously. Through the film, we see the ghost kids that inhabit animatronics. Flash forward to the end, William Afton shows up in the suit to try to take Mike's little sister. The animatronics sees him, attack him, and the suit's spring locks lock. We never see him die, but they leave him in a closet to twitch in pain, pre presumably dying. I omitted a big chunk of the fan that includes a lot of the boring filler exposition, the unnecessary character that is their only to dump exposition, and other characters that never appeared in the games. There's a lot. Throughout the years, there has been numerous YouTubers that made lore videos and gameplay videos that made their way into the film. One of them was supposed to but didn't do to scheduling, but it's irrelevant for this review. Only fans would recognize him, and critics wouldn't. One of them even said their catchphrase. Just a theory. There were a ton of Easter eggs that only fans would see, like the inclusion of a character named Balloon Boy that first made its appearance in the second game. All in all, this film was created for the fans, and I appreciate that. I'm going to start by saying my score is a strong 7 out of 10. Maybe 8. The dream sequences were fun, but unnecessary. The dreams included Mike talking to and getting attacked by the ghost kids. When he came out of the dreams, he was injured, Nightmare on Elm Street style. That was unnecessary and unexplained, but I sort of liked it. The ghost kids slash animatronics were nice at first, which was weird since they weren't in the game. But then they said they wanted to make Abby like one of them. Abby was Mike's younger sister. I didn't mention her because she isn't in the games. There was a sequence where he fights off the animatronics to save Abby. That was pretty cool. Why the f*** did I put her in there? That's unnecessary. Then when William Hampton shows up in his suit, I thought it was an epic moment and I clapped. He even walked like the character in the game. It's here where I am going to point out that William Hampton is played by Matthew Lillard, one of the Ghostface killers in the original Scream film. In Scream, Stu, Matthew Lillard, cleans his knife in his hands. In the FNAF movie, he does the same, which I think was a fun little easter egg slash nod to his past. When he gets defeated and the spring locks start locking, I applauded. Not only because it was lower accurate, but because, one, I predicted it and was right. 
Two, Matthew Lillard is such a great actor and made it believable that it was really happening to him. The sound effects and atmosphere really fit the vibe. Oh boy, the sound effects. The clinking, clanking, and whirring of the animatronics and other parts were perfect and sounded amazing. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the animatronics were real and practical. The fact that the animatronics are real and out here hugging everybody. I want to hug. Like they really stand out and wait for you to come in. Except for Foxy. I don't know what's going on. Foxy. She could look like she. <laughs> she looked like she on hard crap. Nah, but she really pet the cupcake. Shout out to Dalko for the clips. I remember seeing the images of them in progress at the Jim Henson studio, but. Seeing and hearing them in action was mind-blowing. I haven't even touched on the music. The opening theme was done by the Newton Brothers, and it sets the mood with its creepy yet humble vibe. Not to mention it was put over the 8-bit images of what William Afton did. In the later games, there were segments in which you play in an 8-bit world in which showcases the lore and backstories of the characters, including William Afton. And then there was the amazing song that played during the credits. It was appropriately enough Five Nights at Freddy's by The Living Tombstone. The Living Tombstone are an Israeli-American band that play mostly original songs based on popular video games. The song that played during the credits was a fan favorite that was posted in 2014, the same year the first game was released. Like I said, I enjoyed it. It had some issues, some hiccups, dragged down in some parts, and wasn't perfect, but it was fine. They decided to make the film PG-13, which was a really smart move because it can reach a younger audience, which is primarily the fan base. But the caveat is it doesn't allow gruesome kills like you would think a film like this would have. Aside from that, though, there are some kills, and some of them are quite gruesome. At least one is. Was that the bite of 87? But besides that, nothing happens. That's too gruesome for younger audiences. One of the boring parts was a filler of them building a fort in the main play area. It was kind of cute with all the animatronics helping them build a fort with campy music. But that scene could have been taken out entirely and it would be all the same. Without that scene, my score would probably have been boosted up to an 8. Besides that, it's all good. Some people, however, said it wasn't worth the wait, which brought the score down for them. The film was in the process for eight years. The reason for that is because the creator of the games, Scott Cawthon, wanted it to be perfect and in line with his vision. True film critics won't understand the lore, easter eggs, and reasoning behind everything. The lore expands between six plus games and many, many books. The fans might understand it, but that's a lot to fit into one movie. But the critics that don't know the lore might not understand what the reasoning is for anything that is happening. I'm going to end this by saying I am a fan, not a critic. Thank you for watching and listening to me. I know this is different kind of content than I usually do and my voice is sort of monotone but I'm reading off of the script because if I do not then I will never get out what I want to say. So take care and have a good one. Peace.